Welcome to another edition of Retro Junkie Takes Apart Random Old Hardware He Has. And today we've got a Pac-S1, which is out of a uh, Pioneer Laser Active. Uh, it essentially enables uh, you to be able to play Mega Drive games, uh, Mega Drive Laser Active Laserdisc games, and uh, Mega CD. So I figured I'd take it apart, have a look, see if the capacitors are okay. It's from that sort of era where capacitors are starting to fail and they're getting old now. So have a look, they look okay. So I'm probably going to replace them in due course, naturally. But I found there's a nice, big, easy socketed uh, EEPROM chip. There he is. Good old Pioneer PD6126E. The E must stand for Japan. That's the only thing that makes sense, given this is a uh, Japanese-specific unit. They were never actually released in uh, Europe. The US did get them. Uh, if we were looking at a US version, we'd be looking at a Pac-S10, from what I understand. So there's uh, some of the chips in there. There's a the little old Z80. So now we've got a big old 315-5660. And various other MISC, as well as a daughterboard that pops off the top. So we're just going to go ahead and pull that chip out and give it a read. See what we get. It's a... Uh, ooh, what is it? That is very dark. Very hard to read. It's probably very out of focus for you because this camera is not autofocus. 27C1024. There you go. 93, week 28. So let's uh, get that taken out of there and dumped. It's actually quite funny. Uh, while we're just booting up Windows to use the EEPROM reader. Uh, Adventure Time. I've actually started watching it uh, from season one. And yes, uh, we at, at, at where I work for testing DVD drives, we've got a uh, sort of a demo disc of a couple of different cartoons. And Adventure Time is on there, and it is the very first episode. And I didn't realise, from the cupcake videos we did a few weeks back, probably a month back now, we had uh, that muffin guy. He's actually in the first episode, and he takes his, uh, his wrap off. It's very raunchy. Anyway, uh, let's, let's get over here to the programmer. And I'm on a leather couch, and it's really quite hot weather here at the moment. We're still in uh, 2013. By the time this gets to the internet, we'll be well into 2014. So we've got the chip here, which has been removed. We only had a bit of a bent leg on. Uh, they're not too bad, as you can see. So we want to fire up... Uh... I, I booted into the wrong one. Ah, let me reboot. That looks a lot better. Oh, what's this? Oh, unused icons. Oh, oh, they get to me. Ah, oh, Windows. Ah, uh, so what are we doing? We need the EEPROM programmer, which... USB programmer. How focused are we there? Not very focused, not very focused at all. So what do we know about this chip? It is an F brand. So immediately we go to devices, we have a look for, uh, well, let's look for the exact model, which is an MBM 27C1024. No, it's not in the list, but if we have a look at this MBM rubbish, the F is Fujitsu. So then let's go have a look for, uh, sometimes you have to go out, go back in, it's a bit buggy, it's not perfect, no one is. Like me, for example, typing the completely wrong model. So there's no exact match. So we're going to go with a generic 27C1024. Now it's telling me I need the, an adapter, which I just happen to have on hand. This little fella here. Very nicely made. Thank you to uh, whoever on earth I got it from. ADP-054. I think it's MCU Mall. So adapter goes in. 
I think this is the 16-bit uh, adapter, which is usually necessary for the uh, larger chips. The adapter's in, and I need to read 27C1024 fits perfectly. Okay, so now that's in its little home. So we pretty much just head across here and hit read. With a bit of luck. Oh baby, there's some uh, human readable code right there. We do a byte swap. Sega Mega Drive. April 1993. Mega LD Boot ROM. So now we can take that, hopefully. Let's have a look. Save it as, uh, I'll call it Pioneer PD6126E, because that's what it says on the label. So once that's saved, we uh, just get it over to the Mac OS side of things, because that's where I normally live. Uh-oh. Kiga, Fu Kiga, Kiga Fusion doesn't work. On 10.9. Well, that's a bit of a problem. I'll have to go look and see if there's an update. Ah, oh, good as new. Looks like I had a, just a bad version. Corrupt version. I don't know how that happens. Anyway, load Genesis ROM. <laughs> Is that the right way to do this? Oh, let's find out. Pioneer. Check some incorrect, I didn't like that. Uh, we'll want to configure things then. Let's just try loading a Sega CD image, maybe it'll work that way. Not make me go into settings. Nope, it's gonna make me configure things. Knows how much I like to configure things. Ah, uh, so we want Sega CD BIOS, we want uh, Japanese BIOS because that's what it is. Add that in. We've got old power on. Oh, what a bit of techno. Yeah. Fusion unknown. Well, there you go. That's, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Okay, it's, it's a bit weird. Borderline scary. I don't know what it's doing. I bet it goes blue. Oh, I was wrong. Ah, I got it right. Do not want. Oh well, I'll try it in a few different emulators. Well, I managed to get it working, as you can see there. Version 1.05. Uh, it looks like my GQ4X is either on the way out or all these chips I'm dumping lately are very strange. I had to change the, uh, let's have a look. I came across this problem first with the, uh, what's that device I had? Sega Channel. 
and I've just come across it again using these are uh, Fujitsu chips. Where am I going? So in the GQ4X program files thing, there's a devices.txt. So I'll just do a search for the ones I've added. So I've added two now that have uh, a VCC of 3.6 volts, but a VPP of 5 volts. So that applied for the uh, PD23C4000. And now for the MBM27C1024A by Fujitsu. So it's NEC and Fujitsu that are giving me interesting results. So I just thought that I should uh, probably document that in case it's something a little bit bigger than I understand. So there you go. So you know, we've got the code and it works. So I've dumped it multiple times. That's something you should always do. I never do it immediately. Dump it once, see if it works. No, of course it doesn't. There's something wrong. Weird blue and pink screen. Uh, the pink screen's probably meant to be a red screen, uh, indicating that the checksum has failed, which is what Mega Drive games did. But because it's so broken and read incorrectly, it's pink and blue. So there you go. So now we've got, uh, got this which you can't really do much on. And that's all it does. Seems to be missing some probably vital hardware. I noticed in the middle of the uh, pack there's a Pioneer branded chip, a PD6103A, which I have no idea what that is. But it's in there. Looks like this unit would have been made probably mid to late 1993. Going off all the dates on these chips here. So there you go, that's how you get that dumped. And then you can stare at that. Hopefully it helps someone, and thank you for watching as always. Need to learn from my mistakes. Ah well. Subscribe for more! Who wants to know how? Who wants to know how?